French superstar Catherine Deneuve is her country's cultural icon, having been in over 80 films. Her elegance, intelligence, and beauty have left audiences speechless. In 1992, she received an Oscar nomination for the acclaimed drama in the Gene, and is on the screen again in the re-release of Louis Bunuel's 1967 erotic classic, Belle du Jour. We're very pleased to have her here for a conversation about a career and about France. Welcome. Great to have you here. Hello. Um, tell me about the re-release of this. I mean, how did it come about that this film, uh, which uh, many of us did not see in 1967, and yeah, now look forward I... to the first time to have a chance to see it? Well, I, it, it was quite uh, simple as far as I'm concerned, you know. I suppose for uh, the producers it took a lot of time, you know, to get the rights to get yeah. Belle du Jour back because it's a film that hasn't been shown here for over 25 years. But I think that uh, Miramax plus Corsese were very strong mm -hmm. about trying to get it, and so they decided to re-release the film. It's like a revival. I was very surprised, I was very pleased, because it's really, I think, a very, a very important film and a very, uh, very special film also for me. Why? Because it was my first uh, encounter with uh, Bunuel, who I admired you know, mm -hmm. very much. And the film has been very important to me in a way that uh, since, uh, I mean, Belle de Jour is over 25 years now, but even today when I meet people from the press, especially in America, yes. uh, Belle de Jour is always mentioned, you know, the part of Severine, the girl I'm playing in the film, it's still today very attached to, to me. And, uh, and I think it's quite interesting to see, because it's about phantasm, you know, of a woman. And I Met think... the fantasy of a woman, yes. Yeah, it's interesting, 25 years later, still, you know, some people could get attached to your own image, you know, so close to a character in a film. Yeah, they, in a sense, they identified you in terms of this film and this character as a shaping influence because you were a young actress at the time. Not only because I was a young actress, I think, but because the part is quite mysterious and people see me more as a sort of very private person. And it's easier, I think, I suppose, to imagine that I have a sort of double life than some other people. And so it's interesting to see how much uh, the imagination, you know, when when it's left to the people to work on their own imagination can work very well. Tell me about the character. Why is she not satisfied? What is her frustration? What I think she, it, it's shown actually at the beginning of the film in a very short footage of the, in a very short at the beginning. You, On the carriage? Of the, yes. You see her, she's being uh, evidently molested, you know, not to the worst, but she's being molested by, uh, by a man. And so you understand that this woman has got a problem on her own, you know, which is like being uh, frigid, I would say, with a... But I think a woman can be frigid with a man and not with another one. It's that things that happen too. And that's her problem. So she's frustrated, you know. She's frustrated and she feels very guilty, you know, to be able to answer to her husband love as well. Martin Scorsese had something to do with this. Uh, yeah. He, does he remind you of any director because of his sheer love yeah. of cinema that you have Very known? much so. Because very recently, again, I saw something he did on the, that, that was shown on television that he did for the 100 years, you know, of yes. cinema. Shown on French television. French television. And he had made an incredible film of an, one hour, you know, about his favorite American film and speaking over with his voice, explaining why this and that, and the scenes and the, 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 the motivation, you know, for the, for the scene. It was incredible. I saw it twice already. And he was so powerful and so convincing and so interesting, you know, because he was a teacher, so he knows how yeah. to speak about film. And he reminded me very much of uh, François Truffaut. Yes. We've had on this broadcast, he's been here for a, at least for two programs, long programs, one an hour conversation, another remembering Fellini. And he Fellini. can say so much in one program because he speaks so Ex much. Exactly. Yeah. And women who have been with him, Dawn Steele, the executive, and others will tell you that he obsess he's obsessive about film and he makes them just watch movies every night or wants them to watch movies, doesn't make them, just to share that passion he feels. You know, and He's almost to want to be, you know, almost want to teach about films. The yeah. great love he has mm. for it. You know. Have directors influenced you a lot? I mean, when I think about Demi, when I think about Bonnell, yes. when I think about Truffaut, when you think about absolutely, because I met them when I was very young. You know, when I was with Jacques Demi and I did Umbrella of Cherbourg, I was not even twenty years old yet. And I think it's very important for an actress to have uh, to work with very important directors very young because the influence they can have and also the what they what you learn from them you know if you are very interested in films you know about uh, not only the part but the film themselves you know I've always been considering a film more than a part in a film yes and uh, and that was a uh, I mean I was very lucky to get you know uh, influenced by people like that that film Umbrella of Sherberg made you a star in France yeah. 
because the film went everywhere and was a huge success. And uh, the film is so much out of time in another way, not like Belle de Jour, which I think is out of time, but because it's a classic. But Ambolas is a is a film which is completely sung, and it's a, such a different, you know, kind of. Uh, of uh, impression when you see the film, it's like a musical. There is no dancing, but it's like yeah. a very little. But there is, it's more like a musical, and it's like a fairy tale in a way. So the film is very much out of time, and uh, it was a very big success. Yes. And then along comes Bunuel in 1967 to make this film. What influence did he have on you? Strangely enough, I think I was more, I got more of his influence on uh, Tristana that yeah. I did two years later yeah. than Belle yeah. de Jour, because Belle de Jour was very special and uh, he used me, you know, the way I was, you know, the way I looked, at, let's say. And did I was, he choose course, you in part because of the way you looked? Did he say? I think, no, I, I think it was really, you know, a film that belonged to the producers and they had bought the rights and they proposed it to, the, to, to, to Bunuel and tell, told him he, they wanted to do the film with me. It was really a deal, you know, made by the producers. But uh, everybody was agreeing, me, of course. But Bunuel, you know, thought it was the right choice for, the, for that part. So it's not Bunuel that chose me. It's the Hacking Brothers, you know, the yes. producer at the time, yes. that chose Bunuel, who accepted to, to do the film with me. But then we did another film, and he chose me, you know, to do Tristana mm. two years later. Where did this notion of you as glacial, as the ice queen, as aloof, as... Uh, from Belle de Jour. From Belle de Jour. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I would say so. And does it ring true to you, or is it exactly different from the way you are at heart? It's not completely different, because I think anywhere that people are double, I can be very glacial, probably, and when I'm very, you know, either very um, intimidated, you know, or feeling, you know, not that mm. uh, at ease sometimes. Some people can sort of disappear, but I can seem to be very sort of, you know, and yes. very at my ease without showing anything. So that gives me that attitude, maybe less today than, you know, let's say 15 years ago, but still it can happen to me. But uh, otherwise, you know, I think it's, you know, Belle de Jour that sort of gave me that yeah. image, which, because the, the way I, I saw the film last night, you see, yes. and I hadn't seen the film for maybe 20 years now, I didn't see the film again so much. And it's true that the appearance, the fact Saint Laurent was dressing me for the film, the makeup, the lighting, which is beautiful, but very cold, everything, you know, goes in that direction. And that sort of balance, you know, the erotism of the film, which is in a very cold way. You, know, you see things without seeing anything, but you feel yeah. all the atmosphere of the place she's going in the afternoon. I mean, it's in the light, it's not in the dark. Yes. But when it's in the light, you don't see what you're supposed to see. Okay, the storyline, if any one of you have not seen this Belle du Jour, the storyline is a housewife frustrated in her relationship with her husband, frigid perhaps, and therefore she becomes a prostitute during the day, during the daytime. Uh, and it leads to a tragic conclusion for her husband, but at the same time, and she is discovered. Here is a clip. This is her ladyship. Set the, put, put this in context for me, for the audience. Uh, she's uh, she's just beginning in this uh, in this apartment where she works in the afternoon, you know, and uh, she's going to go with the man, you know, that she's supposed to who wants to to try her because it's her debut and she's been there for a very short time, but he has very special uh, thing to ask very her. And she's not needs. used to it, yeah. so he sent her away and uh, the the madame, you know, who is uh, who is running the place, take her, you know, very nervous, say, well, come and watch, and she opens something behind. The, 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 the other wall, you know, that you cannot see, and she's going to watch another girl, you know, treating that man the way he wants to be treated, and she's quite surprised, you know. Roll tape, here it is. Alors, vous avez bien vu? Qu'est-ce que vous en dites? Comment va-t-on descendre aussi bas? Vous avez sans doute l'habitude, mais moi, ça m'aurait pu. How was it for you, after all these years, to see yourself last night? I was more amused, you know, that I thought at some scenes that uh, when I saw the film at the time, you know, some, like the, the humor, you know, for, for me of Bunuel, you know, came out much more clearly to me in some scenes, not the, in that the one. The humor. The humor, yes, yes, the great sense of humor he had, you know, a sort of light way to say things. Yeah. You look remarkably, to me, similar to that film. I mean, it's almost like that was yesteryear, yesterday. I mean, well, that was five years ago. <laughs> I know it was, but you have, um, how do you say this? You have been, as I said, everybody, the first thing when they think of you is a sort of a symbol of 
French women, mm -hmm. you know, as a symbol of France. Uh, and this sort of extraordinary, you're now, in a sense, on the, what is it, the Marianne, the, what is the, are you still that? The, yes, sort of, I'm on the still poster? that, I'm still that, yeah, on the, on the stamps, you know, I'm on the stamps, you know, for letters in France, yeah. you know. In a sense, as the symbol of France. Yes, yeah. but I, I accept it because, you know, I could have done it, I accept it because to me it was the symbol of the Republic, you know. Yes. And it was, for us French, it was something I thought quite nice, yeah. you know. Is there a difference in how w women in Europe are appreciated as they grow older than in America? Do we somehow obsess on youth more than I think Europe? it's a big problem too, you know, in, in, in Europe. But I think it's a little uh, softer, you know, to grow old and... Uh, and as an actress and as a woman, you know, in Europe than in America. But anyway, everything is so oversized, you know, here. Because when you get at the top here, it's nothing compared to going at the top in Europe. You know, it's yeah. much higher. So when it stops, you know, you fall from much higher too. And I think the competition is, uh, is incredible. There is a lot of energy, a lot of excitement about things. But when it goes wrong, it must be very hard because it's very tough. Even here in the United States. In the States, yes. Because you fall so far. And also because, you know, in, in France, we have much more uh, people writing their own scripts or writing for some people. So it's easier to find characters for women because if you are involved with people doing, making films and writing films, you know, you can get good parts, in very interesting parts. It's not, it's, not the same, uh, it's not the same attitude. I mean, you, don't, you are not you know, supposed to be a star, then you become a non-star because you grew you know, after 35 or let's say even 40. I think you are lowered a little more than that in Europe. Yeah. You know? you also, you've had an opportunity to work with great directors and to have a yeah. range of roles. Yes, that I was very lucky because you know, not only people say you made good choices. I, yes, it's true. I, made, I agree some good choices, but I think you know, to get good choices, you have to get the... The, the thing being offered mm. to you. Did you want a Hollywood career in a classic sense of a Hollywood career? Uh, I don't know what's a Hollywood career for a European actors, you know. I suppose if I had come down here and stayed there for a while, maybe it would have been... I think if you want to work here, you have to stay there, you know. And it's not that I didn't want to, you know. It, does, it just didn't arrive, you know. When I, when I came to work here with Jack Lemmon or Burt Reynolds, and that and was quite Stool, a while. Then... Yes. And even the hunger, you know, yeah. you, you, that was, you know, 10 years ago. But I think you have to stay there for a while, you know, be there and meet people and, and see people. Because, frankly, there are incredible good actors and actresses in America. Why use a European actress unless you meet her and you find something yeah. special or think of having something special, you know, for her that you would write or would want her in this part? What seems to be nice about French films and the French film industry is that they, there's room for smaller films for mm -hmm. smaller budget films, for adult films, for films, not adult in terms of, of eroticism, but in terms of relationships, yeah. uh, you don't see that here anymore. I mean, it's almost like it's either a very huge film, yes, or very action underground. adventure, mm -hmm. rather than smaller love stories. On occasion here, but not as frequently as you see them in France. But I think that the, the cost you know, of the film in general is much higher in America, no matter what happens. Yeah. So we are lowered, you know, to do, because we cannot do really big film that big, because we don't have the public and the audience to go to the movie to make the money back, I suppose, on those very big films. So mm -hmm. on that level, French cannot have any competition, you know, with American film when they come out in, in Europe. And that's a big trouble for, for us, yeah. European productions. But in another way, I think now they are starting, you know, because a lot of very tricky and clever people, you know, are starting to think that you can make much more many films trying to have small budgets some young directors because they have no choice you know people wouldn't give them the money they don't have the stars so they mm. must you know the film with what they have but also people realizing that there is a sort of new audience for film that would be interested in american films but you know other subjects that you cannot treat you know on a certain budget because you are supposed to have such a wide audience when it's a very tricky game you know film yeah. because if it's big you need big audience then some subjects you cannot treat you know for a big audience because it's too it's too difficult. If you make a very difficult film, you better have to keep it quite low key, you know, about the budget to be sure that uh, people won't lose too much yeah. money because you can get out of a job very quickly here. Yeah. Have you had the amount of control over your career that you wanted? Um, I never had a career, you know. To me, in a sense, the career is something that you can look back, you know, and say, well, that was it. But when you do choices of films, you choose films and people you want to work with, but you don't make the choice saying, is that going to be good for my career? It's, it's something that you can say afterwards, you know. I was 
frankly, I was lucky enough to be offered a lot of things and I made my own choice, you know, sometimes also with my agent or some friends I really like, you know, in films, asking them their opinion. But most of the time, it was to make sure, you know, that I was doing the right choice for me, which means it's not, the, it's not always the right choice for the audience. You know, I made very interesting film that didn't make, you know, didn't make it, you know, as a, as a, for the audience. Frequently in conversation with actors and actresses and even directors, you find that the film that they prefer is not necessarily the most successful and the film that the audience prefers. Is that true with you? It's true with everyone, yeah. I think, you know. What's your... F it's a question of, uh, you know, if you think that you are going to talk to a hundred people and you have a film that was, uh, you know, a big success, yeah. you have more chance to, to meet people, that a uh, hundred people that, that saw the film than the ten one that love you in a film that, you know, would make the much smaller uh, results. Yeah. And I think it's, I, it's, I think it's quite fair. It's normal, you know. And also because in those films, you know, the actors get part that are much more interesting, personally interesting, you know, like, for example, I could tell you that Tristana is really a part that I loved, I did with Bunuel, right. two years later, but Tristana is a wonderful film. But because of the subject, which is not the same thing at all, you know, it never got the audience of Belle de Jour. Yeah. How about Repulsion? Repulsion is different because repulsion is a sort of uh, I'm playing a, a sort of schizophrenic girl and there is mur there are murder scenes, so the film got the attraction of both pu public, you know, both mm -hmm. audience. It's a little different. Uh, I mean, I like the part, you know, in the film, but it could also be seen by another type of audience. The film is Polanski a good director? Very good director. What makes him good? Uh, the result. <laughs> the result, yeah. But is he the good result. with actresses? Is he good with actors? Is he... When I worked with him, I thought he was wonderful. Actor. Yes. Uh, Roman, you know, is a Polish director that was formed to one of the best schools in Europe. Yeah. And that's a Polish school, you know, for cinema. And he knows everything about everything. It can be very irritating, I suppose, sometimes, you know, for the people or the producer or, or the cameraman or the sound man, because he knows everything. But acting, sound, light, sight, everything. Yeah, let me take another look before we get too far. Belle de Jure, this is a scene in which you say, I'm glad I stayed. Set it mm -hmm. up for me. This is... That's, uh, I have a, I'm going to have an affair, which because, because it becomes an affair, you know, in mm -hmm. the film, uh, a man that is going to become a client, you know, becomes fun of me, and it's, uh, it's evident that I'm responding to him, so all of a sudden my life is changing. This is more than work. This is much more than work. And at the first thing, the, this man doesn't want to stay with me because I have a mole in my back. And he said, get dressed again, you know, uh, I don't want to see you. Then I go out and I come back. And instead of getting dressed himself and let, leave, you know, he is in the room waiting for me on the bed. Roll tape, here it is. Toi aussi, tu me plais, Marcel. Tu reviendras? Peut-être. Tu n'as pas d'argent? De l'argent. C'est pas ça qui me manque. <laughs> Talk to me about beauty and being beautiful. Um, has, has it made life easier? Do you look at yourself and say, and feel, in a sense, what everybody oh, else sees well, in you? Well, it makes life easier, and that's even dangerous, you know, because it's true that uh, even if today, you know, you won in, the, in, in cinema and films, you know, mostly you can see the difference with 25 years ago, where being beautiful was really something very much necessary, you know, to be a, a young actress. After that, you were lower to have character when you were older. But today, people want, be, what, want people with more interesting faces, you know, that are really beautiful in the classic sense of being beautiful. Yes. But being beautiful, you know, helps to open doors in life in general. You know, people will smile more easily or will open the door, you know, be, it's true that it helps. So when it's dangerous, you know, very dangerous. <laughs> when you, you take advantage, you know, sometimes <laughs> of it. People do what? I mean, being, you know, being good looking sometimes without even knowing you can take advantage of the situation. Yeah, you know? It gives you a, an extra a leverage. Yeah, because you charm people, you know, yeah. even sometimes without realizing you're charming people. But it's true that it's sort of people are nicer to you and it's not always for who you are. It's not for who you are, but because of their perception but, of what you look like. Yes, but frankly, it's been more a help than a boredom, you know, too. Yeah. But you have, when you look at yourself, you yeah. like the what you see, you like the way no. you look. Well, sometimes, but frankly, seeing myself every day, uh, uh, before or after, you know, doing my makeup or going to, even if I don't go to work. No, I cannot tell, like, the result every day. I've been living with myself for such a long time, you know, I yeah. know the, I know what I like, I know what I don't like, but also I'm used to it. You know, I'm no, I'm no 
I'm no magic to myself, you know, I don't look at myself being a... Sometimes I can see a still pictures, you know, I say, oh, that's a nice picture, and really, really good on that uh, photo. But frankly, I'm from a family of girls and good-looking girls in my family, and my parents never, especially my mother, wouldn't allow yeah. people, you know, to say that uh, looks was important, yeah. you know. Yeah. She said, that's not a good thing to say to young girls. The death of your sister, should. the worst thing ever happened to you? Probably the first worst thing, yes. Yeah. The first one. Yes. She wanted to be an actress more than you did. Of course, yes. She was an actress. I just, you know, went on a side when she asked me to test for a film during the summer where they needed a young girl to play her sister. That's how it started. Yeah, and you acted But she was together. an actress. She was working at the conservatory and she was on stage already. Yeah. She was killed about the time of the release of this film, was she? No, it was, uh, yes, uh, about uh, the release, yes because I was, she was with me at the opening in Paris of Belle de Jour, I remember very well. Yeah. What would you have done if you weren't an actress, if you hadn't gone into, because your parents were stage actors. My parents were stage actors, yes, yeah. both. Did they both, they want both you and your sister, you were one of four children, yes? Yes, we were four children, and, but and my, my sister, you know, was the one who was really supposed to be an actress, and I, I was quite young, and I didn't really think, you know, about, uh, being an actress at that time, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know. Maybe just married, have children, divorce, yeah. and then to work in something. I don't know. Or maybe, I uh, don't know, painting. I love painting. and Do you uh, paint? I don't paint. Yes. No, but when you I was know. at school, you know, that's something I was good at drawing, you know. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, maybe something related to that, you know, I don't know. Not become a painter, but something related to the graphic arts. Your children are in the theater? Yes, yeah. my, actually my son is in the theater, actually, and my, they are both, you know, actors, and my daughter, you know, is in films as well, yes. What do you do when you don't work? What are your passions? I, uh, I think I work more, you know, when I, I say sometimes, you know, shooting is a wonderful thing because you are not there, you're not taking the phone, you come back late at night, so you can really <laughs> work, and no, that's when you're all on you location. do. Or even in Paris, because yeah. I come back late. But when you're not supposed to be shooting a film, there are so many things a woman, you know, is supposed to do uh, even uh, more than when uh, she's uh, working. So I do things that I have no time to do while I'm working, and I do for my pleasure. I, um, I'm very interested in uh, gardening. I mean, not only gardening, you know, putting my hands in the, in the yeah. soil, but in, about plants and botanic. I'm very interested in yeah. gardens and... Uh, and trees even more than flowers. The interesting thing about you in America, I mean, for film, people who love film, they know about your career, but they also probably know you as much for commercials and advertisements yes, that's as true. they do as an actress. And I think the, the fact, face you know, and the image. people say that I was, you know, a sort of symbol for, for a French woman. It's because I did, yeah. you know, this campaign for Chanel a long time ago. And still today, you know, I stopped doing Chanel 20 years ago. Yeah. And some people say, are you still doing uh, something with Chanel? You know, remember that beautiful ad? And in the mind of the people, it's timeless. It's very strange. But my image then as an actress was a little confused because people knew me more for commercial than uh, films when, uh, when I did yeah. Chanel 20 years ago. What does it mean to you to be French? I mean, to to be French means what to you? I don't know, because, you know, I'm French and not being American, I cannot say what it would be like, you know, I could yeah. answer that question if I knew what it was like to be American. But I suppose in the mind, what I can read, you know, from what people ask me, you know, about being French, I suppose it, it means, you know, to be quite uh, light on certain things yeah. and uh, having uh, to have a good time and working at the same time and trying to manage everything without always, you know, thinking of the career. I read once that you said a, a lot of interesting things. One of them you said was that most of my passions are known and my obsessions are private. Well, I, I think it's like Belle de Jour in a way, you know, that I, you need to keep something for yourself. And it's true, I'm not going to discuss with the public that just see me and I don't know. I'm not going to say only maybe eye to eye to someone talk about private things that are very deeply involved with myself personally. Who you are and how you define yourself and well, I mean, yes. what's the difference in an obsession and a passion? Well, it's two different things. I mean, a passion can be something that makes you very uh, happy, you know, to the point that it's something very fulfilling. An obsession can destroy you. And do you have obsessions? I said so. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm unlikely to find out. Uh, you might find out, but I say sometimes if, you know, some journalists were very, I don't know, I'm sure through your work, you know, the, 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 the films you do, or the work you've been doing, and the things you've been involved with, you know, people would know, yeah. could know and say much more about you. Of all the characters, which are you closest to? Which do you think more reflects, 
you know, your, your sensuality, your eroticism, your intelligence, your passions, your sense of self-image? Uh, I say it would be like the woman maybe in the, in the last metro. In, in last metro? In last yeah. metro. Because? And, but because of the responsibilities, the work, being involved personally, having troubles to manage everything, to, still trying to help people in very bad situations and very dangerous situations. It would be between that and a film that I don't think came out here, a comedy I did with Yves Montand called Le Sauvage, yes. where I was playing a very nice woman, really a bore and irritating, you know, and trying always to get things from people in a nice way, but terrible way, what we call a... We say a bitch in French, but it's nice. I, I don't know the bitch word in English. Bitch doesn't mean the same thing here, yes. No, I mean something, you know, a woman who is very nice, but she's really a pain on uh, when she wants something, you know, to everybody. But she managed, you know, to get what she wants. So on the one hand, the last metro, oh, that, so part of you is this... Part of me is light, is, is, part of me is darker, you know. Part yeah. of me is serious and part of me is much uh, yeah. open, you know. But it doesn't, I can't see darkness in you. I mean, that you don't seem you? to be so... Because I'm blonde. Because <laughs> I seem to be very sort of at my ease talking yeah, and all exactly, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly, without sense of... Well, I suppose because the dark side, you know, it's some ways, something more, more private maybe and something that if you knew me personally, you know, in life, yeah. that you would know more about. But it's true that in when you come, you know, on stage or you come on a, on a set, you know, just the fact you are put on light, you know, gives you another uh, attitude. It's different. But I think certain things maybe you haven't seen, you could have seen the darker side of me. Closer to myself, maybe. Yeah. Uh, tough. Difficult. Tough, not so much tough than darker, you know. Darker in, in how? In the sense of being, you know, not as, you know, f not as uh, happy as I seem to be, not maybe not as uh, a little more uh, melancholic, you know. Melancholic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Over what? Melancholic about life? About no, it's a, a question. I was always a little melancholic, and people who know how to say things, you know, from face say that my face sometimes seems to be smiling, but not my oh, eyes. No. Never my eyes. That's what I've been told, and I think it's quite true. It's that your eyes thing. don't smile? No. That but might you, be true. Yeah, but you're happy most of the time. No, I wouldn't say I'm happy. You're not? No, I'm, I'm not unhappy, but I wouldn't say I'm a happy person because, you know, being, you know, today the place I am being, you know, that age at today, in today's time, it's being happy is something that I wouldn't think of. I mean, it's not part of my life. Okay, I don't me, feel... Uh, here's what I would say. In a bit, you would, you would, let's take you. You are going to say it, but I'm not going to I say know, it if I, I don't know. But like take it. me with this. You are, you, I would think that you would be hugely in love with life. Yeah, Look that's at true. What you, I'm you, very passionate about life. You've had great romances in your life. Yes. You've had an opportunity to, to, to have a craft and to continue to grow in that craft. Oh, but I agree with you completely. You have, have wonderful all children. reasons you to be happy. You live in one of the great cities. You are, in a sense, a symbol yeah. of your country and, and what it's... But that's not enough to be happy. What else it's do you need? Enough. I'm not unsatisfied. Okay. But I cannot be a happy person in the world we are in today, that's all. Bec uh, because of the suffering and because... Because of not of the, the suffering, but because my, my reality and the, the what I see, you know, with my eyes every day, I mean, it's something that that cannot... If I, I was living on yeah, an island, you know, right. maybe I would be happy with, yes. with all what I've done, but I'm living in cities with people around me. You see human suffering. It's not suffering so much than uh, I see the hard side of everything, you know. I've got very good eyes. I mean, you know, I see everything. And I, sometimes I even see yeah. things I shouldn't be seeing, you know. But it's, I'm just a human being on that side. I'm sensitive like a human being, you know. I'm not just a happy actress. I'm a human being and I, I, feel, uh, I feel a lot for a lot of things that I don't live. But it's, is it, what do you mean though? Is it suffering? Is it, is it? It's involved you know, the with that, a hardness, that life or harshness. Is tough and, and painful and hard for people to make a go of it in many cases. Not so much that, but you know, everything that happens today, you know, everywhere, it's are things that, uh, that of course disturb me. You know, Yugoslavia, where I live in Europe, it's something yeah. you can see. The uh, children suffering in the Bosnia and the cruelty of that not war. Not so much the children, the situation of seeing, you know, people, uh, I mean, it's in Russia, everywhere you have reasons, you know, not to be unhappy, but reasons okay, important enough yeah. not to be completely happy. But I have very happy moments in days because I'm a very passionate person in life. That's true. Yeah. You, when you think of you and in terms of, do you act as much as you want to? In other words, would you do work harder if you had an opportunity, or do you take work exactly? Do you find the right balance between work and the rest of your life? I can choose my work, you know, and what I want yeah. to do, but I don't choose the timing in the sense that if 
I don't like, you know, something that I might do because, you know, it's been, you know, eight months or a year I didn't work. I'm not going to do it just to do it. But I could really make uh, a film and a film and a half a year. I mean, let's say three films in two years yeah. to be happy. Sometimes I don't really do it because I don't find, you know, what's right enough, in my opinion, for me. But also, I think that we have so many uh, films on television, you know, yeah. on in France, that if people see you that much, and they see me a lot on French television, that uh, I don't see how they could go, you know, outside on, and see me on screen if they see me at home all the time. So I try to be there, but not all the time. I do very little uh, things on television in France, you know. I don't appear on television much, very little. Do you Once like interviews or dislike them? Is this painful for you or, or, or this kind of conversation? I prefer, in a way, the interview where you're there, you know, radio and television, because yeah. at least you're there, you say what you want, you do your own mistakes. The problem with the written press, you know, for actresses, it's not always very serious. And uh, an interview, you know, if you don't have the, the tone of the voice, the, the tonic accent on yeah. things and the, the graphic, uh, I mean, everything that goes with the voice that changed, you know, the, the meaning of a word can be changed just by the level of your voice. So I miss that when I read interviews, not only with me, you know, with people I know. What do you want to do? What's most important for you now as you look forward? Um, it's to agree deeply with what I'm doing. If I do uh, accept those things and I don't like them, it disturbs me a lot. Yeah. I have to be really in harmony with what I say and what I do. Are you mostly in harmony with what you say and do? Uh, let's say I try enough to be satisfied on that level most of the time, yes. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's the right thing. It's just my deep feeling you know, about uh, what I think of I should be doing as yeah. far as I'm concerned in my head. Uh, there's much to talk about. We're out of time. I thank another you for program. coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll do another program. Uh, in 10 years' time or in 5 years' time? Well, I hope less time than that. Uh, <laughs> so do th I. <laughs> I, it, it, I know you've got a film with John Malkovich coming out also yeah. at some point called Convent. Yeah. Yes, it's going to be at the New York Film Festival in, uh, in the autumn. In October, mm -hmm. yes. And you'll be back for that? Probably. Well, Too soon to see you, maybe. Okay. I, well, no, no, no. I think that would be wonderful. Uh, there is much to talk about, and I thank you for sharing this thank time with you. us very thank much. You. It's a pleasure for the audience, and I'm sure for me. Belle de Jour will be re released, uh, seen in New York and Los Angeles, and later seen across the country. Uh, Catherine Deneuve.